All right, guys, we are back from the dealer. We've got our nitro charge and the hell could that be? Well, that seemed a little excessive. I don't know what I could be getting that's that important. What? Likes? Subscriptions? That can't be right. I never get those. Wait a minute. Aww. Wrong channel, guys. All right, guys. So the liquid gold showed up. Um, so now we should have everything we need to get the shock pack together. My plan is I'm going to fill the reservoir up with oil like this. Then I'm going to use the IFP to cap it off. Keeping as much oil in that reservoir as I can, I'm going to turn the shock upside down. Fill oil in the cylinder above the little high low speed ports in there and I will push the IFP into the reservoir hopefully purging all of the air out of the high low speed adjustment lines so I'll push the IFP all the way in then using compressed air I'm going to have a little stopper below the reservoir so that the IFP isn't able to pop all the way out and I'm going to use compressed air to push the IFP back down, ensuring oil does not drop below those IFP ports. Then I'll push the IFP back up, and we'll do that a few times to our best effort to get all of the air out of the high and low speed adjuster. Then we'll put the piston onto the shaft and sink it down there, tighten down the cylinder cap and then I've talked to my local dealer they're going to charge the reservoir with nitrogen to me I did get in touch with high gear suspension they said for the IFP on this shock should be bottomed out so all the way down I might leave it you know a quarter inch above just for peace of mind but that's what we're up to today, so let's get at it. I've got a little bit of time. Hopefully it's enough. As I pour the oil into the reservoir, it's obviously gonna leak kind of slowly out of the ports into the cylinder. I'm gonna catch whatever oil I can in this cutoff can. I'm just going to adjust the adjusters all the way hard. I believe that would make the ports smaller and hopefully less oil will come out. We'll see if that works. IFPs on the ready. Like we talked about, this doesn't have the little threaded insert or nut there for the tool to kind of plunger the IFP back and forth like I've seen. So we're going to do my style of purging the high low speed adjuster. I'm going to fill this with oil as much as I can, drop the IFP in, hopefully that keeps the oil sealed while I flip it upside down and kind of purge that IFP back and forth. So I did get a little oil that came through, but I think I caught most of it in there. Sitting in this position, it's holding the oil in the reservoir so none's bleeding out. All the air should have floated up to the top, which should allow us to purge it out. So now we're just gonna top off the cylinder. Um, I know you can't see it, but I can see the ports in there. 
We're just gonna get the oil level a bit above there. I'm just adjusting the dampener all the way soft, which should open up those ports as big as they'll go, make it sh making it <clears throat> making it easier to push the IFP up. See some bubbles coming out of there. That's good. So we've got the cap on. I made up this little stopper, so it should be able to put that right under there. Pressurize this with compressed air. It'll push the IFP back. And then we'll just go back and forth, like I said, to make sure we get all the air out of the ports. So I've got my little plug down here. This will stop the IFP from popping all the way out and spreading oil everywhere. Got the air compressor only set at like 30 pounds, so we'll see how this goes. Not great. All right, let's give that another try. Oh no, Woo. Oh God, it almost pivoted the shock out. And a lot of stuff got covered in oil, but it eventually worked. All right, started off a little messy, but I think we got our point across. I should probably. I was able to push the oil back down without going below the ports. And down here, the IFP is back to the bottom. So we're just gonna use our hands to push that back up and we'll do this a couple more times, hopefully more successful than the first. When I did it the first time, once the IFP hit my little stopper here, it started rotating the shock and we almost blew oil all over the place, so. I will be aware of that this time, and I think the reason it sprayed everywhere the first time was because I didn't really... There we go. A lot less tool pressure. We'll get the cap back on there. Get our stopper under there. IFPs back down to the bottom. I could leave the cylinder cap on there. I just like seeing, you know, how many bubbles we're getting each time.
So I figured I'd do this like three to five times. Um, these be the third time here, and I'm still seeing quite a bit of bubbles come out. That was the first promising one. Just a couple of bubbles coming out. Looks like it's working. I was starting to get worried. And then using my tool, keep an eye to see if we're getting any bubbles out. So now we've got the shock purged and we can get the cap back onto our rod with our freshly cleaned up valve stacks. You want to put this on first because I don't want to um, have all the new seals and stuff rubbing up on these threads. So I'm going to go at it from this angle. This should be the right way. So just kind of slowly work that on there. Make sure we don't forget our bump stop. Since it's kind of hard to grip this, I'm going to take advantage of screwing this on. To get a grip on the shaft to tighten down the whole set. And one for good luck. Now we'll be dropping the piston into the cylinder. And then there's going to be a bunch of air bubbles sticking on this guy. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of plunger the piston up and down, but keeping it completely below that oil level. So we'll want to keep the piston completely submerged in the oil and we'll just plunger it back and forth, purge all the air bubbles out of the piston. And I'll keep careful to not go down below the porting line. I don't want to, if an air bubble gets down there while I'm plundering, I don't want to push that back into the IFP or the reservoir. I'll also want to keep an eye on the IFP. I haven't put the reservoir cap on yet, so as I'm plundering, that could put force on the IFP, and I don't want it to drop all the way out. We'll lose everything we've done up to this point. I also don't want to go too crazy on this. Um, you know, you may think doing it real fast is good. What that's going to do too is create a bunch of smaller bubbles in the oil. And that'll make it more difficult for them to rise up to the top. I'm going to just do some slow motions. Make sure we get as many bubbles out as we can. Then we're going to do some hits with a mallet to kind of break loose any smaller bubbles that might be in there. And just remember, we're trying to bring all the air to the top. If you're pushing down on here and then you see air bubbles still in the top part of the oil and you're just pulling it right back up, you're just sucking those bubbles straight back down below the piston, which is not where we want them. Nice slow motions to start with. So just push it down. Wait for the air bubbles you've gotten <clears throat> from below the piston up top to come all the way up and pop. If you want to speed them up, you can use your torch. Just make sure to maintain that piston a good amount below 
the surface of the level, check your IFP, make sure it's not going to pop all the way out. I'm actually going to drop my little dowel under there. So. Given it time, once I push it down to let all the bubbles that made it past the piston to come all the way up to the top. So I've got it to a point now where just the sound's really consistent, moving the piston up and down. Um, you know, you don't hear any popping of the air bubbles coming through there. What I'm gonna do to set my IFP, um, I contacted High Gear. They said have it bottomed out no bleed i don't know what all that means but it sure sounds like they just want the piston all the way to the bottom that sounds not ideal to me so i'm actually gonna push my piston all the way up and then just plunge her down with this and kind of feel it i'm gonna just look for like maybe a quarter inch or something i'm gonna give it a couple good pumps like i said probably moving it a quarter inch or so so now we're just gonna top it off with the oil all the way to the top. We're gonna screw in the cap and some oil is gonna spill out the sides, that's fine. We're just gonna want, wanna make sure we minimize the amount of air in there. So we'll just go to the dealership, they'll drop a nitrogen needle in here, pressure up, pressurize the reservoir up to 200 PSI, then we'll be able to drop the spring back on, put it on the sled, and be good to go. Oh. Alright guys, like you know, got back from the dealer, got my nitro charge. The shock is feeling really smooth. I'm um, not hearing anything funky having it compressed, so we're just going to throw the spring back on there and we'll get it onto the sled. Really appreciate you guys watching the video. If it helped you out, throw it a thumbs up. If you want to see anything else I've got going on, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>